socialite with a long string of pearls, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. You're gonna have to serve somebody. It may be the devil, or it may be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. We all think that power is something you obtain when you become a leader. Whether you're the leader of your neighborhood homeowners association or the leader of the free world, you've got power. Business leaders can hire and fire and control where the money goes. PTA leaders get to choose their favorite fundraisers and have an impact on the school. Leadership equals power. But that isn't really power. True power comes not from whom you lead, but from whom you follow. True power isn't about outward authority over others. It comes from what you worship, whom you serve, whom you follow. Where does your power come from? The number of people you supervise or employ? The number of boards you sit on? The offices to which you've been elected? Or does your power come from following Jesus? You might be a rock and roll addict prancing on the stage. You might have drugs, your command, or women in a cage. You may be a businessman or some high degree thief. They may call you doctor. They may call you chief, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. You're gonna have to serve somebody. It may be the devil, or it may be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. When the winds of change begin to blow, the waves begin to crash, when your friends desert you, when you mess up your life and hurt people you love, when the income stops matching the outgo and the bill collectors start calling, when the doctor says, I've got some bad news, when the years begin to add up and the body doesn't work like it once did or the memory begins to fail, when death sneaks in and takes a loved one, where does your power come from to walk through these valleys? You may be a state trooper, you might be a young Turk. You may be head of some big TV network. You may be rich or poor, you may be blind or lame. You may be living in another country under another name, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. You're gonna have to serve somebody. It may be the devil, or it may be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. Where does your power come from when you've got to stand up for what is right, when those around you sit still for what is wrong? when your best friend betrays you and then asks for forgiveness. Where does that power come from to forgive? Where does your power come from when your teenage daughter tells you she's pregnant or your son calls from the city jail and asks you to bail him out? Where does your power come from when God calls you to step out in faith to do something new and scary and challenging? Where does your power come from? You may be a construction worker working on a home. You may be living in a mansion or living in a dome. You might own guns. You might even own tanks. You may be someone's landlord. You might even own the banks. But you're going to have to serve somebody. You're gonna have to serve somebody. It may be the devil, or it may be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. 
We mostly like to think we are the masters of our own fates, the lords of our lives, and that they are our lives. That's what freedom is all about, right? It's why we love living in the land of the free and why we're willing to fight to protect that freedom. The whole idea of having to serve someone or something else, and the only freedom we really have is in choosing whom we serve, this does not generally sit well with us. We also like to think that life is about achieving happiness and self-fulfillment. It's an inalienable right written into our constitution, the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. Discovering my inner potential and using it to give my life joy and meaning and fulfillment. That's what it's all about. We are free. We own our lives. We walk the path we choose in order to achieve the happiness we seek. You may be a preacher with your spiritual pride. You may be a city councilman taking bribes on the side. You may work in a barbershop and know how to cut hair. You may be someone's mistress or you may be someone's heir, but you're gonna serve somebody. You're gonna have to serve somebody. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. And then Jesus challenges us to take up our cross and follow him. The question about this whole Christianity idea is whether following Jesus is about getting what we want or whether it is about getting off the throne in the center of our lives and letting Jesus sit there. In a way, it all boils down to a comma. Let me show you what I mean. Two words, please God. Taking up our cross means that whatever is required in order to do that, our lives are to be spent pleasing God. But that's not the way most of us live our lives. Most of us spend our lives adding a comma between please and God. So it reads, please, God. We think life is about God pleasing us, meeting our needs and desires, helping us actualize our potential. But that's not what Jesus said. And that's not what Jesus did. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is praying the night before he is crucified, he asks God to remove that cup of suffering. He says, if there's any other way to do this, Father, don't make me have to go through with it. But then he says, but not my will, your will be done. There was no comma between please and God for Jesus. When Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. went to Memphis on April 3rd, 1968, he knew his life was in danger. He knew that the safe thing to do would be to step out of the limelight for a while, let others carry the cross for a while. But that night, in a speech that continues to ring down through the decades, he said, But it really doesn't matter with me now, because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen 
the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. The next day, at the young age of 39, he was shot to death. This past Wednesday was his birthday. He would have been 91 years old if he had not taken up his cross and followed Jesus. There was no comma between please and God for him. You might like to wear cotton, might like to wear silk, might like to drink whiskey, might like drinking milk. You might like to eat caviar, you might like to eat bread. You may be sleeping on the floor, sleeping in a king-sized bed, but you're going to have to serve somebody. You're going to have to serve somebody. It may be the devil. It may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me.